Hello and welcome to InTV. And I've got some big news. INEOS is now officially in the energy business. This month we're coming to you from the headquarters of our newest company, INEOS Brea. This is InTV. Coming up later, we'll hear more about our groundbreaking move into the energy sector. Fantastic business, very simple. Just need to pump the gas up and, and get it to market. We'll be in the laboratories of the University of Liverpool and the deserts of Nevada as we meet the team aiming to beat the human-powered land speed record. I had to push as hard as I can for that last mile, Re really gave it everything. I'll be putting your questions to the INEOS chairman, Jim Ratcliffe, and get his thoughts on the strategic thinking behind our shift upstream. At the end of the day, it's pumps, it's pipes, it's vessels, it's filters, it's uh, dealing with liquids and gases, which is our bread yep. and butter. And of course, we'll bring you the latest news and insight from INEOS, the word for chemicals with energy. This is the control hub for INEOS Brea. And these screens behind me monitor the workings of our platforms in the Southern North Sea. These are now all owned and operated by INEOS, and the gas they pump will provide the energy for UK homes and manufacturing. Just a few weeks ago, INEOS made a game-changing announcement. Forging an exciting path into the energy industry, INEOS has acquired all of the North Sea gas fields and assets owned by DEA UK. The new business is named INEOS Brea. It's going kind of counter current to a lot of people are leaving the North Sea, but obviously that, that's created a, an opportunity and so there, there's probably some, some good wins here to be had by someone with, a, with an entrepreneurial take on things. The collapse in the oil price have created an opportunity, we think, to, uh, to buy some assets that are uh, good, uh, well positioned, they're in good shape and they've got a reasonable long life ahead of them. These high-quality, low-risk assets are based in the Southern North Sea. The platforms are relatively new and remotely controlled, reducing manpower costs. The gas they produce will be sold into the national grid, supplying UK homes and businesses. Fantastic business, very simple. Just need to pump the gas up and, and get it to market. It controls production of about 8% of total UK gas production. Uh, one in 10 homes, if you look at consumption, there are a lot of opportunities, there are a lot of assets, a lot of people trying to exit, uh, but there is still a lot of oil and gas in the ground here. A lot of the infrastructure's in place. These assets come complete with a highly skilled production team based in London. Very impressed so far with the team I've inherited and, and the organisation at, at large. That was one of the reasons why this was an attractive acquisition for us, that it came with a ready-made organisation, it had experience in recent developments uh, in the North Sea, and then to them we can bring our experiences in cost efficiency and capex discipline and reliability and, and operations and, and therefore we can create value so great opportunity well that's what's happened and with me now is someone who can tell us why it's happened jim ratcliffe jim let me start by asking how long ineos has been considering this investment in the north sea i would say probably about 18 months we've stepped into this new pond yeah uh, with a very sensible acquisition, I think. It's relatively low risk. These are gas fields that we've bought. They're new gas fields, so they've got a long life. Um, they've got new kit. Mm. The platforms are new. Um, they've been well-engineered, well-designed. You know, they, they'll supply about 10% of mm. all the homes in the UK with their gas, so it's got a significant size. So why do you think we're the people who can do this differently? We do, we do have a proven track record in chemicals of having successfully improved efficiencies so we now operate most of our plants around the world at very high levels of operating efficiency and we do run those units very cost effectively when we compare ourselves with our competitors and we compare ourselves today with how that asset was the day that we acquired it yeah. generally speaking it's run more efficiently it's run more safely and it's run more cost effectively in our mind we're thinking that why oughtn't we to be able to do that in the oil and gas arena, because if you look at those assets that you see in oil and gas, they're basically, they're chemical facilities. Yeah. If you look at a platform in the North Sea, 
it's a, it's a bit of chemical. It's not even a particularly complex bit of chemical. Kit. It's yeah. in a difficult environment, obviously, yeah. because it's sat there in the middle of the North Sea, which, which, is, you know, which is a harsh environment. But at the end of the day, it's pumps, it's pipes, it's vessels, it's filters, it's yeah. um, dealing with liquids and gases, which, which is our bread yeah. and butter. OK, thank you very much indeed, Jim. All right, thank you. Three years ago, INEOS Nitriles was forced to reduce capacity at its plant in Green Lake, Texas. If we go back three years, the feedstock price in the US was quite high and demand in Asia was low. However, the US shale gas boom and reduced feedstock prices has changed all that. It's been announced this month that the plant is to re-establish production on its fourth reactor, taking it back to full capacity and putting it in a strong position within world markets. As petrochemical feedstock prices have fallen, we've been able to be more competitive. It's a very positive step, as within our portfolio, we have an asset in Green Lake that has access to advantage feedstock, world-scale production and living technology. INEOS's new office in London is now home to INEOS Trading and Shipping. The team now has its own brand new trading floor and is building for the future. We are creating a properly upskilled team which will enable us to be a tier one trading company within the very competitive markets we deal in. The integration of the team in-house brings it closer to the rest of the business and will further assist INEOS in securing supply for its assets and getting the best prices for its products. It's going to allow us to do our jobs a lot better in terms of acting in the market just because we can, we can trade numbers faster than we would be able to in the, in the old place. It's great to see INEOS growing like this and, and to be really committed to trading and, and this new development. It's official. Go Run For Fun is a runaway success. This month in Liverpool, the charity reached its target of 100,000 5 to 10 year olds taking part. That's enough kids to fill FC Barcelona's massive new Camp Stadium. It's hugely exciting. We reached this target six months ahead of schedule and it's just testament to the huge success of the campaign so far. We're so grateful to all of the teams who have taken part so far. We've had people devote their time and energy to fundraising and to organising the events and it's become an incredible collaborative effort. But it's more than just a run. As well as smashing the target for the fun runs, INEOS has developed award-winning educational media as an important part of the campaign. That's why I'm mad about vitamins, because vitamins are vital. One thing that links our INEOS locations across the globe is our incredible people and their achievements. So we've been finding out a bit more about what some of them do for fun. Steve Nash is a control electrical engineer at INEOS Runcorn Membrane Chlorine Plant. Well, I look after a team that maintains and generally looks after all of the control and instrumentation. But in his spare time, he's a mountaineering ultra-athlete. So my background to endurance racing and extreme sports, it's really evolved from interest in mountain walking into mountain running into mountaineering. But when you reach the top of a mountain, you have to get down again. And then the paragliding comes along as a perfect way to descend a mountain. It gives me a freedom that's very difficult to find in any other sport. This year, he took part in an incredible adventure race, the Red Bull X Alps. So the selection process for even getting into the Red Bull X Alps is that you need a very strong CV in flying, paragliding, and mountaineering, and probably some ultra running or marathon experience. I think that INEOS really do support an active, healthy lifestyle, and that's one of the main reasons that I was supported throughout this adventure. The Red Bull X Alps is one of the toughest races in the world. The aim is to be the fastest person to get from Salzburg in Austria to Monaco via a set of turn points but they can only travel by foot or by paraglider. So this race cannot be won on the ground. I'm pretty strong on the ground through my ultra running background, but really you have to make all the gains in the air. This is where as a Brit, I slightly lose out to the Alpine nation guys who fly there all the time. Unfortunately, Steve didn't win this time, but he's not one to give up easily. 
It is the ultimate challenge. Without a shadow of a doubt, this represents the pinnacle of the, the kind of the two sports that I love. This race comes up again in 2017. It's once every two years. And my name will definitely be going into the hat. Here at INEOS, we celebrate entrepreneurship and engineering. And this year, we've sponsored an exciting new project that's attempted to race its way into the history books whilst pushing at the limits of human endeavour. Every year, on a remote five-mile stretch of road in the Nevada desert, teams from across the world compete to break the human-powered land speed record. INEOS sponsored a team of 16 engineers from Liverpool University, aiming to beat the world record of 83.13 miles per hour. It was very clear from the beginning that there was a real challenge ahead of us. Over the course of two years, they built a radical new bike, the Arian One which was powered by especially tested and trained British athletes. Our bike needed to cut through the air. On an upright bicycle, you're struggling to keep up to 30 miles an hour. So we need something that's beefier and bigger uh, in order to allow us to go um, as fast as we need to go. We approached INEOS, who decided to sponsor the project, and they gave us phenomenal support. INEOS flew the team to Battle Mountain, Nevada for the competition. Each rider had a maximum of 12 attempts at the record. I didn't really feel nervous until I started my warm-up. doesn't really sink in what you're actually doing. On their third effort, the team broke the British record, a huge milestone. I told the guys I think I've done 70. Everyone was so happy. Uh, Ken was ecstatic. It was just this really sort of happy mood and everyone was really, really excited to what was going to come. As a Canadian team set a new world record at 85 miles per hour, the weather dramatically deteriorated, reducing the window for all remaining attempts. With fewer chances left to break the world record, the Arian team needed to push their bike to its absolute limit. Ken gets up to about 55 miles an hour. A gust of wind came out of nowhere. And then unfortunately, Ken hit a bump in the road. The crash caused major damage to the Arian 1, but due to the clever design, rider Ken Buckley escaped injury. With time running out, the team worked through the night to get the bike on track for the final day of racing. The world record was now out of reach, but the team were determined to go for one final effort. So when I was sitting there um, in the bike on the start line, sort of had a moment to myself where I was like, you've just got to do it now. I had to push as hard as I can for that last mile. Re really gave it everything. We hear over the radio that Ken's just hit 75 miles an hour. We broke our British record again. Yeah! 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 And we didn't get the world record this year. We're going to be back. It's British cycling and British engineering. Those two things just go so hand in hand together. We're great at doing this kind of stuff, so we need to start showing it. Well, that was a truly amazing effort, and you can watch the full video over on the INEOS YouTube channel. Now, in TV is the chance for you to put your questions to Jim, and I managed to pin him down and quiz him with the latest collection. So, Jim, let me start with, uh, with a nice, difficult one. This is from Lionel Moore in Ineos Ligamas at Marina View. Right. Uh, Europe's chemical industry faces extinction in 10 years. Interesting statement. With Ineos's plans to explore fracking and bringing US shale gas into Europe, do you now think that those rumours of Europe's demise were exaggerated? Well, I think um, you know, bring, bringing the shale gas across will help underpin uh, a lot of the European assets if we can bring competitive feedstocks in, but a couple of things have changed since that, that statement was made, which have been helpful in the European arena. One is oil obviously has come off considerably from its $110 uh, highs that we've seen for the last three or four years down to, you know, now today about $40. And secondly, the euros come off, yeah. so that reduces the, the cost base in Europe. So there's hope after all. That leads us into a question from Ricky Labia from Ineos Oligamas at Laporte uh, to do with oil prices. With oil prices hovering down below $50 a barrel, how is this going to affect Ineos's investment strategies, particularly in chemicals? We produce petrochemicals. Petrochemicals are either made from oil or gas. Yep. So if your feedstocks are more competitive, then that's probably a good thing for chemicals. In, in very generic terms, it probably encourages you to invest in in the chemicals platform, yep. if your raw materials are more competitive, and at 
$40 oil, it's more competitive. Yep. Yep. Going back on the shale piece then, there's another question here, no name on this question, but why do you think it's so hard to convince people that shale gas extraction is safe? I don't know. There's such a wealth of experience of drilling and fracking for shale yep. in North America that, you know, that, that should have dispelled all the concerns and ghosts. In America, they've drilled and fracked in excess of a million wells over a 10-year period now. And it's produced an immense amount of hydrocarbons, which has reduced the price of energy hugely in America, which has revitalised manufacturing and a lot of the feedstocks for chemicals. We're at the end of the year. If you look back on the year, what would you pick out as your maybe highlights and lowlights of 2015? Well, breaking my shoulder on the last run <laughs> of the last day of the ski season was quite a low light for me. I think, I think you know, it's, it's been a year more of highlights than lowlights, to be honest. It, um, it, we've had our best ever year. Um, the US continues to do very well on the back of shale. Europe's benefited because the euro's come down. As opposed to the last few years where America has been doing extremely well and Europe has really been struggling, we, we've seen this year that America's continued to do really well. Uh, but Europe's done well as well. Yeah. You know, our, our O&P business in Europe has had a, an outstanding year. Yeah. And one last question, um, talking about lowlights. Yes. Um, oh. We saw a, uh, the demise of Man United's Champions League efforts. Do you think Louis van Gaal's going to be there in a year's time? Well, I mean, it's, 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 it's been depressing beyond belief this year, really, because football is a... They don't seem to be getting at the moment. At United, it's a, it's, a, it's a game of entertainment, it's supposed to entertain and at the moment it just puts you to sleep. Shocking really and you know United, that whole ethos of United has been attack, at goals you know and a bit of flamboyance in the front line and all it does now is puts you to sleep so I mean I, yeah, you know I've not, I'm not having a good season. I'm definitely not having a good season. I'm with you there. <laughs> thank you very much, Jim. <laughs> All right, thank you, Tom. That's it for today. Next time, we'll be in Raffness as the first of those giant tankers bring shale gas from the US into Europe. Until then, goodbye.